thank you very much to to all participating countries it was um, it's been an excellent uh, forum i'm not going to talk about web3 policy making in the uk we already had uh, two parliamentarians uh, speaking uh, on this topic um, but i do like to share my thoughts on web3 in general and and why we are having these discussions today so firstly a quick update on this forum so this forum was launched in late 2020 when the world was under lockdown to bring together um, all of you all blockchain associations from around the globe uh, and the first event was held in april 2021 and the first summit was in september 2021 so this is our third summit um this technology as as other speakers have also alluded to this is very global so it is important that we very carefully examine what's happening in other uh, jurisdictions so we can learn from them what i always call nations collective wisdom there are 51 member uh, nations of this forum and we have 194 countries in the world so i would like to invite other countries who are not yet part of this to join this forum and uh, and learn from each other so in web3 we are living at the dawn of a new era in public services as uh, as lord holmes and and, uh, and natalie mp also highlighted creating a user centered web3 economy is demanding no doubt, but uh, a highly rewarding opportunity for governments and the public sector. And I believe nations will gain considerable rewards for many decades to come if uh, Web3 is effectively implemented. For citizens and society to benefit from Web3, uh, all key enablers in the quadruple helix, which is government in terms of policy and regulation, academia, uh, in terms of research and development and think tank and knowledge networks, enterprises, the startups, the tech creators, and then the public, uh, the end users. And so all of these four um, uh, groups need to work together if Web3 were to be successfully implemented. Now, Web3 at its core is uh, open. The ethos are of decentralization, transparency, immutability, auditability, permissionless systems, borderless systems. And Web3 gives us fewer bureaucratic controls. There is lesser risk of corruption. Uh, there is more freedom for innovation. There is more autonomy. But at the same time, the organizations that are involved uh, in um, in managing Web3 are very much uh, centralized. And we do see time and again bad, bad actors emerge, such as uh, at some crypto exchanges, for example. And that's not a failure of the, the Web3 or, or blockchain itself, but those who provide those services. So the real challenge here is gradual implementation of decentralization, uh, what I call maximum possible decentralization and minimum viable centralization so it, it is going to be a gradual move um, and then the next step is that you make laws and you govern the centralized uh, actors so you're not governing the actual technology itself um, and making laws for the actual technology itself you're making laws for the applications of that technology so you are making laws for apps and the and the providers so regulation i believe is important it's inevitable but i'm i must say that we we need, we need fewer red tapes we need more red carpets to allow us to experiment and explore and really to avoid making it too restrictive and difficult for innovators to put forward new ideas and new services and new products also an important reminder as i always said i've posted about that on linkedin as well recently that decentralization does not mean that there is a lack of accountability it means that the accountability 
now lies on the shoulders of every individual in the ecosystem and this great privilege this great power of self sovereignty that we all talk about it comes at a price of great responsibility uh, so the next step towards building web3 ecosystems is then laying the infrastructure foundations we what we then need is open uh, user friendly equitable interoperable and ideally a transnationally agreed standards and frameworks and forums such as this one uh, is facilitating such discussions um, so since <clears throat> all of us are here in the in the metaverse today let's take metaverse as an example uh, we are working very closely with other metaverse standards associations and there are sets of standards such as um, uh, governance standards dispute resolution standards um, uh, avatar standards uh, education and training standards and 3d assets standards technical interoperability standards standards for digital assets in the metaverse nfts payments standards ip standards and so on so these are the sets of standards that we need to devise to build safe interoperable sustainable uh, decentralized uh, metaverse uh, blockchain based applications um Another challenge is, uh, and, and, and also a massive opportunity at the same time, is how do we translate science into practice? And we, we have been advocating about evidence-based blockchain ever since its inception of the association. And, and in fact, it's, it's our motto, advocating evidence-based blockchain. And what it is, is basically, uh, in a nutshell, ev uh, access to uh, highest quality evidence that is available and in scientific terms we call it uh, level one evidence which is peer-reviewed data published data open data which has been looked at which has been scrutinized which has been evaluated and then uh, this highest quality evidence uh, acquiring the evidence and then applying the evidence are the two uh, critical steps towards better uh, policy making I recall uh, SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce once uh, said in her speech that evidence-based rulemaking is not yet the norm in crypto regulation. So policymakers and regulators cannot make uh, top quality recommendations. We cannot build top quality applications if we have poor quality uh, evidence. And center for evidence based blockchain which is one of the one of the many initiatives of the bba what is doing it is helping um, build those evidence uh, uh, base it's helping businesses helping policy makers make better decisions by making um, research not only high quality research um, available but available in a format that is easy to understand for policy makers in the form of uh, infographics some of those you can see here being displayed because there is no point doing a research if nobody can understand it or read it and it's all too complex so it's very very important that the good quality research is made easy easy to understand for policy makers for regulators and and also they are available open access because if they are not open access if they are not available to uh, the policymakers, how are they going to make uh, better decisions? So, one of the ways uh, is infographics, research summaries, uh, plain English language summaries, and we do indeed publish these infographics in in thirteen different languages now, including uh, Portuguese, Hindi, uh, Italian, Spanish, German, and so on. So, uh, these research research summaries are available open access. They are free on our website. You can go to a Center for Evidence-Based Blockchain web page, and all these infographics are there, and they're free to use, and you can use them in your presentations and and publications and so on. So they are they are open, they are accessible anywhere in the world. There's no paywall. All you need is an internet uh, access. Now, last couple of points. So every uh, when it comes to the to enterprise blockchain. Every inventor, every founder, every CTO, every CEO, they want their blockchain project, their idea, their 
their organization, their startup to be a success, uh, to get the attention of right people, to get to secure more funding, to get more customers, to hire the best talent, and they, everybody would like to be seen as a, you know, as a, as an, as a thought leader, as an innovator in this space. And if you carefully examine, we actually published a full paper on this three years ago. Uh, uh, evidence-based blockchain findings from a global study of blockchain projects and startup companies. And if we carefully examine these successful companies and startups, there is a, a consist consistent pattern that emerges. And all of them do one thing right. They make better decisions than their competitors. And how do we uh, make decisions better than our competitors use the best available evidence to make decisions. There is no other way around. If you if you use poor quality data, if you use poor quality evidence, and you make decisions, uh, then um, uh, sooner or later uh, things are going to fall apart. And there are there are many examples, and we've seen that. So we we are indeed, as other speakers also highlighted, we are at a critical juncture in the development of Web3. Web3 is here, it's upon us. We have a unique opportunity, all of us, to uh, address some of the shortcomings of, uh, of Web3, uh, of Web2, correct the flaws of Web2. Um, building a self-sovereign uh, economy, uh, some people say it's, uh, it's a dream it 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 can never become a reality what i would say is that this this is our opportunity in in pursuit of that dream and i think this is a dream worth fighting for it may be an idealistic dream uh, but then again dreams are idealistic but it's not an unrealistic vision of a better future a better society a more inclusive society a more equitable society where there is uh, equal opportunities, uh, as other speakers have uh, highlighted, that it democratizes access. It democratizes access to information. Web3 democratizes uh, ownership, your, your, um, your data, uh, your communication, your influence. It democratizes those things. And these things are important. And we didn't have those uh, in, the, in the Web2 era. So. Um, so I think this is a dream worth fighting for. It's it's worth um, um, pursuing this, and I think we have made some some good progress. There is still a lot of work to be done. We are getting there. Um, so finally, I'm I'm very pleased to see that a new uh, all-party parliamentary group dedicated to blockchain technologies has been launched. Um, BBA is the secretariat of the group, and it is led by members of UK Parliament and House of Lords. All details of the various exploratory groups and working domains that the group will be working on is available on the uh, BBA website. And if you would like to uh, play your part, uh, please do get in touch. Thank you for listening to me. And uh, thank you again for uh, joining the summit.